makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. There's been a number of recent scandals involving women's rights and LGBT rights groups that seems to have one common denominator. Uh, both of these groups are basically political fronts for the democratic establishment or liberal centrist establishment. And it's not surprising why these scandals have emerged over the issue of Andrew Cuomo. So the first case is Time's Up, and you've probably heard of them because they were one of the most vocal groups involved in the Me Too movement. And recently, in late August, their CEO, Tina Chen, resigned. Let's read, if you haven't heard why, why she resigned and why the scandal is brewing, well, over the past few months, sexual abuse vic survivors have accused Time's Up leaders of betraying them after New York attorney General Letitia James reported they had consulted with a top Cuomo aide about how strong a stand Time's Up should take on the allegations. That is absolutely despicable. News reports allege that Chen and, and board chair Roberta Kaplan gave feedback on an unpublished opinion column smearing Cuomo accuser Lindsay Boylan. And the Washington Post published text messages in which Chen told colleagues to stand down from releasing a statement in support of Boylan. Chen was once a corporate lawyer in Chicago and became First Lady Michelle Obama's chief of staff. She co-founded the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund. Uh, with Kaplan, who also resigned from her position as board chair of Time's Up over the Cuomo matter. So, a lot of Democratic Party operatives, usually involved in some way with, you know, the Obamas, the Clintons, uh, end up supporting Cuomo. How unsurprising is that? Now, the scandal is brewing further because Time's Up apparently is shaking up its... Uh, yeah, it's new leadership. So not just the CEO, but uh, there is uh, gonna they're gonna reconstitute their whole board, and they're gonna step as the whole board is gonna step aside in thirty days, and new ones are gonna be appointed. And I should add, these uh, these include some very prominent uh, celebrities like Ashley Judd. So yeah, pretty disgraceful from this group. And then there's another problem, and that is, so, the, the problem with Time's Up apparently precedes Cuomo, the Cuomo affair, and one, this is a really shocking article in the Daily Beast, one former staffer basically described it as, it was patriarchy with a dress on. <laughs> um, yeah, that is, that is sad. The organization began attracting criticism in 2020 when it declined to provide financial support to a woman who accused then-candidate Joe Biden of sexual assault. So if you if you recall, uh, Joe Biden has had a, quite a legacy of rather creepy behavior with certain women. And one of them, Tara Reid, uh, you know, accused him openly of sexual assault. And since this happened in the middle of the campaign, a lot of these groups basically just went hush about it. They they didn't support Tara Reid in any way. They uh, it was clear that it was their intention to allow Joe Biden to run uh, without any kind of smearing on him for his record with women, which was appalling. So so much for political neutrality so much for lack of bias, and more importantly, so much for actually listening to women, you know, because uh, I, th I thought one of the slogans was believe her, but clearly this only applies to women making sexual assault complaints against uh, candidates that you don't like. And trust me, if this had been against uh, Bernie Sanders, trust me, they would have gone absolutely apeshit over. But when it comes to your standard democratic establishment candidates, your liberal centrist establishment candidates, not a peep. Anyway, the other scandal has involved the human human rights campaign, HRC. And this is also, uh, it's, a, it's a much older group that is basically an LGBTQ 
advocacy group that also has very strong links with the democratic establishment. And there have been calls for the, uh, their, their current leader, Alfonso David, to step down precisely because it was also involved with, uh, with Cuomo. So here's, here's the scandal. The LBT, LGBTQ advocacy organization opened up an investigation to its own president who was previously a counselor to Cuomo after New York State Attorney Letitia James released a report finding that the government had sexually harassed 11 women who are former and current state employees. Uh, David was pulled into the controversy because of his alleged involvement in efforts by Cuomo aides to smear the accusers. Uh, in one case, David provided Cuomo's team with a personal file from one of the accusers who had worked for him during his time in the governor's office, which was later leaked to reporters in an effort to undermine the woman's accusations. David also told Cuomo aides he would help find the individuals to sign into an op-ed aiming to discredit a different accuser, according to the result. Yeah, so this is absolutely disgusting. This is incredibly sleazy. And uh, again, let's look at HRC's record. Uh, it's rather biased political record. In 2006, HRC's 32-person board of directors voted to endorse Hillary Clinton for president. This resulted in considerable controversy, causing thousands of users on HRC's Facebook page to co post comments critical of the decision. Many cited HRC's own congressional scorecard, which records a 100% rating for Bernie Sanders, while Clinton herself only scores 89%. Uh, as inconsistent with the, their endorsement. Uh, additional scrutiny was also placed on the connections Clinton herself had to the organization when it was revealed that HRC's president, Chad Griffin, had previously empl been employed in by Clinton's husband, former U.S. President Bill Clinton. Uh, in 2018, they endorsed and Andrew Cuomo, uh, despite her ri his rival, Cynthia Nixon, who is bisexual. Yeah. So they got heat for not supporting an LGBTQ candidate and supporting her opponent instead. Uh, yeah, the HRC endorsement hurts Cynthia Nixon's chances and that coming out against a viable progressive queer woman is the wrong thing to do. Yeah. So you can, you can see what these groups are about. They're not really committed to the, uh, the, the issues that they claim that they stand for, whether it's women's rights, whether it's LGBT, uh, LGBTQ rights, um, they are basically fronts for supporting Democratic establishment candidates. And, you know, even when those candidates clearly do not have a spotless records on the issues that they claim to support. And certainly there is no way that anyone in their right minds could have supported Andrew Cuomo over Cynthia Nixon, uh, you know, not just because of Cynthia Nixon's identity uh, as a bisexual, but also on just the general progressive platform that Cynthia Nixon was running on compared to Andrew Cuomo, who is a freaking mafia boss. But yeah. And then, of course, you know, the endorsement for Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. Again, there is no way in hell that you could have seen these bo both of these campaigns and assume that Hillary Clinton was better than Bernie Sanders on any progressive issue. LGBTQ rights, women's rights, whatever. There is just no friggin' way that you could have thought that she was better than Bernie. And, well, what's the, you know, what's the lesson from all of this? The, the lesson is clear. Liberal centrists do not actually care about these issues. They really don't. They love to, you know, start these advocacy groups. They love to pretend that they care. They love to put these hashtags on their Twitter profiles, you know, hashtag BLM, hashtag me too, hashtag believe her, uh, LGBTQ flag, trans flag, etc. But when it actually comes to walking the walk, they don't care because all they're interested is in the, their crony capitalist uh, partners to be in power. Crony capitalists like Hillary Clinton, like Andrew Cuomo, who will, uh, you know, end up funneling money to these same groups so that they remain viable. But in return, what happens? 
they will end up endorsing these candidates rather than the ones that actually do stand for the issues that they claim to care about. And that is how liberal centrism works. That's how the liberal centrist establishment works. You know, creating all these front groups that don't really stand for anything and who will smear your opponents for even the slightest transgression for any of these issues, while at the same time turning a blind eye when your preferred candidates end up, you know, in scandals like the ones that have involved uh, Andrew Cuomo. Which, again, anyone should have known that Andrew Cuomo was a creep long before this scandal had emerged. And with Joe Biden, there is just no sensible way that if you were a group advocating for women's rights, that you would have left Joe Biden to run unchallenged without any sort of criticism for his really bad record on women's rights uh, in terms of his personal behavior, which has been well known and well documented. And, you know, if you want to argue that Trump was worse than, uh, than Joe Biden, that is fine with me. You know, uh, sure, if you have only two options, both of which have terrible record on women's rights, uh, on sexual abuse or just sexual harassment or just being a creep. Yeah, Trump was worse than Biden. No one's, no one's denying that. If you want to make that case, then be open about that case and make it. Um, but do not pretend that Joe Biden was without sin in the, on this issue. You know, don't pretend he was spotless. Don't pretend that people like Tara Reid were somehow like Russian operatives or uh, just in any way, you know, because these people smeared her. They absolutely smeared her. They, they resorted to character assassination uh, in ways that, you know, the accusers of Trump uh, were, were not, uh, you know, those were believed. Those were, those were heroic women who stood up against people like Trump. But people who, women who do the same to Joe Biden or any establishment leader do not get the benefit of that treatment. And that is why I will say it once and for all, unless, uh, in case my, my video record on this channel has not been clear enough, liberal centrists are fucking hypocrites. They are the worst hypocrites right now. And they deserve to be called out for this. And, you know, we have to support, you know, as leftists, we have to support these issues. We have to be on the side of women's rights. We have to be on the side of LGBTQ rights. We have to oppose things like the Texas uh, anti-abortion laws and any future Supreme Court decision that, un that supports it further on a national level. We should support this in any country worldwide. But that doesn't mean that then we have to give these groups a blank check, that we can't, you know, investigate and see whether these groups really stand for what they claim they stand for and aren't, in fact, just, you know, political fronts for liberal centrist candidates, democratic establishment candidates. So, yeah, uh, I guess it's time's up for time's up. And on that note... If you enjoyed this video, please like, please share. Most importantly, please subscribe to this new channel. Thanks again for watching.